Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to day 29 in 30 days of mine. Today I'm going to be showing you the K-means node. K-means is a very, very popular and powerful yet simple algorithm. And it's part of the unsupervised learning class. It lets us classify things without providing any labels. So for my use case, which honestly is, is just for demonstration purposes, it's very, very simple. It has a tiny data set size. I have just computed the mean distance that each airline flies into Florida, as well as the hour that they mostly fly into Florida. And I want that to be segmented into groups using the K-means node. So I drag that over to the canvas and I connect it. The first option lets you select the number of clusters you want. Let's go with four. You can select how to base your centroid. You can base it off the first couple of rows, or you can have it randomly pick points and base the clustering off of those points. Here you select the columns. I only want to use the mean distance and the mode of the hour. You can enable highlighting if that's something that you use. Highlighting, I believe, is relevant for visualizations. And of course, over here you have your flow variable options and your memory policy options. So I'm going to run this making four clusters and that executes extremely quickly so if we go here we can see which clusters each airline has been assigned to you can also see the leanings of each of the clusters one important thing in clustering is to make sure that you have separation within your clusters because if you don't you may need to change the number of clusters you're creating a cluster should be enough to give you valuable information and to enable you to make meaningful groups, but you should not have overlaps. And you can always experiment by having more clusters and see if you're still being meaningful as when you had less. So making clusters is really a trial and error and evaluation. There's, there are many things you can evaluate with making the clusters. So let's just visualize the clusters re really quickly. I'm going to give them colors. And then I'm going to graph them on a scatter plot. Okay, I can notice right away that I have completely separate clusters. You can see down here we have cluster one. Cluster one flights mostly leave earlier in the day and they don't exceed 800 miles. So they leave earlier in the day and they are more short, they are more short haul flights. Cluster two, these flights, you know, most of them leave earlier in the day, but we do have a couple leaving in the afternoon and a few leaving later at night. And these flights are more mid range. And then we have cluster zero, which is all by itself, so lonely. And this is only one airline, really. So there's no pattern here. And then we have cluster three, only two airlines. They fly more of a long range and they tend to leave late afternoon. Another interesting thing to do is the table viewer node. This really lets you filter and see, you know, which airlines are in each of your clusters. And uh, you can actually select the columns you want to include. We really only need to see the airline name, the cluster, and let's just have the hour and the... Um, the, the distance as well. So you guys have actually seen two more new nodes, those being the color manager and the table view. That's a nice bonus, right? So here we can search for cluster zero and see cluster zero is very, very lonely. It's the American West Airlines. It travels for a longer distance. Cluster one. Cluster one is our shorter range airlines and they travel mostly towards the morning although we do have a couple of afternoon and night flights air tram is there delta airlines is in this cluster sky west is there u.s airways is there as well cluster two cluster two flights are longer and they tend to arrive in the morning so do we have some coming in in the afternoon and at night as well and finally, cluster three is our long haul airlines. Alaska Airlines is here, of course, because Alaska is pretty far away and you have Virgin American. So this just shows you a case where you can 
cluster out although we did have a very very small data set of only 24 rows but you can use this k-means node to cluster and put your data into meaningful groups which can really help you make some good decisions all right you guys that's the end of day 29 we have one more day and that's day 30 so i'll see you tomorrow and then i won't see you for a while have a nice one guys look forward to seeing you tomorrow goodbye